In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a choir sound using just your voice and a few simple tricks inside your recording software. If you're like me and you're a recording artist that wants to make music that features vocals that sound like a choir, but you don't have anyone else to sing with, then this method should help you get there all by yourself. I've used this technique in a few of my songs by now. But for this video, the example I'll be using is a song from my latest EP called The Squid that features a sort of Gregorian chant type choir sound. So without further ado, let's dive right in. To do this, you could use a multi-voicer or ensemble type plugin but those don't always sound very realistic. So we're going to do this manually because trust me, it will sound much better. The first thing you'll need to do is set up a cycle recording session inside of your recording software. I'm using Logic for this, but these steps can pretty much be applied to any digital audio workstation. First, scroll to the part of your song that you want to use the choir effect on and then from the top of your screen, you will create a loop section. For best practice, leave a bit of space before and after the vocals will start so that you have a lead in and nothing will cut off abruptly when played back. The next step is to bounce your audio, create a new project, import the file, and once again, create a loop section over the duration of the file. If you don't have a lot going on in your song arrangement, this step isn't necessary. But if you do have several tracks already like I did, or any CPU taxing plugins, this is going to free up space and processing power while you're recording. Next, create a new track. And once you have a microphone set up, just make sure as always that your input levels are green, you have as little background noise as possible, and definitely make sure you use a pop filter. Since we're going to be adding a lot of tracks, those little clicks and pops will start adding up quickly. So now that you have your microphone and your DAW set up, the smart thing to do would be let your loop play through a few times and scene over it to rehearse. I didn't do that. I literally just started recording and after a few crappy takes, I listened back to what I had and decided to delete it because it was just terrible. But once you're rehearsed, you're ready to start recording. If we are his free, After you've recorded about 10 takes, stop and test how it sounds so far. Unpack your take folder by clicking the number at the top left of the audio file and select Unpack to New Tracks. Now every file is on its own track and you can listen to them all together. Keep in mind, there is a lot more we're going to be doing before we're finished, so don't be discouraged if it isn't sounding great at this point. On the other hand, if you listen back and the majority of the takes you did were just way off key or off rhythm, join the club, then you always have the option to do what I did and just get rid of them and start over. After you've checked your sound, Click undo to go back to loop recording and keep going. You can do as many takes as you would like, but I went for 20 takes just for this part. Now, before I record any harmonies, I always make sure that my first part sounds good to avoid any difficulties when I'm recording the second part. Once you're happy with the number of takes you have, unpack the take folder again, click the top track, then shift click the bottom track to select all. Then right click the top track again and select create track stack. This will give you two options. Click the summing stack option because this will let us apply processing to all of our tracks together. The first thing you'll want to do is pan your tracks evenly across the spectrum from left to right. This will be easier to do in the mixing window. I created a pattern starting with the two middle takes at zero, then panning left and right by increments of seven keeping everything symmetrical. After you've panned your tracks, listen back again and look at your meters. 
If you notice that things are louder on one side or the other, or that a particular voice is cutting through all the others, find which track is causing problems and make adjustments as needed. Now that we're done panning, I'm gonna go through all the plugins I used on this track stack, but the processing you choose will likely depend on the song and the context you're using it in. For this song, because it was such a dense mix and the vocals had to compete with loud, distorted guitars, I made some EQ decisions that were a little bit questionable. Even though I only mixed this song a few months ago, there's already a few things I see that I would do differently nowadays in hindsight, but that's just the way it goes, I guess. Starting things off with EQ. After the EQ, I used three different stages of compression. For the first one, I used Logic's Squash Compressor from the guitar pedal board. And then for the next two, they were both Studio FET. The first one had a really slow attack and release time, and the second one had a bit faster of both. After that, I used an exciter with a boost at 1500 hertz. I have another EQ, the graphic EQ, which is what is perplexing me the most about my mixing decisions with this song, but we will move past that for now. I have one more stage of EQ. I have step effects going, which is another Logic stock plugin. It's just adding a little bit of delay. Lastly, I used a Waves F6 plugin to sidechain some of the frequencies to the ultra low bass parts. But the most important tool you can use to really make it sound like a choir is reverb. I used Logic's built-in chroma verb for this with the following settings. It's important that you don't add the reverb onto your actual track stack. Instead, select below and send it to an output bus. The reason we're doing this is if we record harmonies, we want to send those to the same output bus so that everything sounds like it's in the same space. When you're done panning and processing, now would be a great time to listen for any unwanted background noise or vocal sounds. The easiest way to fix these problems is by splitting tracks and adding fades. I always set my secondary tool to the fade tool so that I can easily add fades by holding down command. If there's a particular sound that is bothering you, say a click or a pop in one of the vocals, find the file that is causing problems by soloing through the tracks, then select the exact moment the sound happens and press Command T to split the track. Then add fades both before and after the split and the sound will be gone. If there are any gaps in your vocal part that are only filled with background noise, you can click and drag to select all the tracks and add splits on each side of the gap. Then select and delete the gap. Just don't forget to add fades afterwards to the other sides. For more subtle editing, you can use volume automation dips instead of fades. Keep in mind that after you've added automation to your track, Logic will no longer let you adjust the volume of the track normally. You will have to adjust the overall volume of the track here. So the last thing to mention about the editing process is adjusting the rhythm of the vocal tracks. Since we want this to sound as natural as possible, we do want to keep some variation in between the takes. If we edit that too much, it's going to start to sound weird. If something is way off time from the rest of your takes, you can either split and drag the track to line up with the rest of them, or if you want, you can use time stretch. Make sure you select slicing because this will edit your rhythm without changing the pitch of your section. If you want to add harmonies to your original part, repeat all the steps we did for the first part. So make a cycle recording, create a track stack, and then pan and edit the parts. For the squid, I added a higher part, a falsetto part, a low octave part, some background harmonies, and then a distorted vocal part for the finale. Altogether, I recorded almost 80 vocal tracks just for this part of the song. And as mentioned before, every track stack was sent to the same output bus with the chroma verb. That way everything sounds like it's coming from the same space. And now, the final result. Drum roll, please. It's where I is free, the
Thanks so much for checking out my video, guys. I hope that you'll be able to use this technique in your own songs. If you want to check out the full song of the squid, you can click here. Or if you want to check out my latest EP, you can click here. And you know what I'm going to say next. The annoying YouTube stuff. Please subscribe to my channel and like and comment on this video if you enjoyed it. That will help me grow my audience and is the most helpful way you could support my channel right now. And if you want to go even further, you can check out some of the merch I have on my website. I'll put a link in the description. Alright, see you in the next video. Thank you.